Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Coach here from Echo Base Network. Today we're going to take a special look, a look back at the great Irvin Kirshner. Let's dig in. Irvin Kirshner was a film instructor and mentor of George Lucas at USC. Kirshner summarized his interaction with Lucas when asked to direct The Empire Strikes Back, saying, Of all the younger guys around, all the hot shots, why me? I remember he said, Well, because you know everything a Hollywood director is supposed to know, but you're not Hollywood. I liked that. Irvin Kirshner originally turned down George Lucas's request to direct The Empire Strikes Back because he did not believe he could possibly improve upon A New Hope. Kirshner agreed after Lucas told him he would concentrate on visual effects at the Skywalker Ranch and would leave directorial control to him. Kirshner said Lucas told him it would be his picture. Kirshner wanted to take The Empire Strikes Back in a more serious direction than the first film, although he did not want to stray too far from what Lucas described as the Saturday matinee, fun kind of film it had been. Kirshner later described directing the film as one of the great experiences of my life. Kirshner also had his funnier moments, for example. At the end of The Empire Strikes Back, Kirshner wanted Luke to feel pain in his cybernetic hand, or the audience would find Luke putting his arm around Leia a bit creepy. Kirshner did not return for Return of the Jedi, having spent almost three years on The Empire Strikes Back. However, he stated in retrospect he would have directed a film in the prequel trilogy had they been produced sooner. He was succeeded by Richard Marquand. George Lucas gets all the much-deserved praise for creating the Star Wars galaxy, but with The Empire Strikes Back, director Irvin Kirshner added a level of character depth that is not always present in the other installments. Kirsch as he's called on set, is the perfect compliment to Lucas. He's a dreamer. It doesn't shy away from, what if he directed another Star Wars movie? In 2010, Kirshner was asked the following. The initial reviews for The Empire Strikes Back were mostly positive, but they were the most mixed of the original trilogy. Is it satisfying to know that, years later, Empire is the critic and fan favorite? Kirsch replied, I have not given much credence to reviews of my films. Sometimes they're wrong, but it didn't matter to me. I have not been a follower of how many millions my films made or did not make. In this case, I wanted very much for the film to succeed because I knew that George was spending his own money on it. I think the critics felt that they were going to see an extension of Star Wars. In other words, they wanted another Star Wars. I decided that the potential was much greater than a return of Star Wars. When I finally accepted the assignment, I knew that it was going to be a dark film with more depth to the characters than in the first film. It took a few years for the critics to catch up to the film and to see it as a fairy tale rather than a comic book. Fans have written over the last 30 years telling me how eagerly they awaited the second film of the trilogy. I hadn't realized how many young children would be seeing the film and how it would affect them. I think the kids responded to the movement, the characters, and the fairy tale quality of the film. The humor helped make the film appealing to more mature audiences as well. Kirsch also shared fond memories of being on set with the cast. He said, In shooting the film, I had to make three characters come alive. Not just act alive, but come alive. Mark was incredible. He interpreted the character, gave him depth. He was a true trooper, and he was up to every challenge. Working with Yoda was a real challenge. Carrie was very young and had not done that much work, but she was very, very bright. I possibly didn't give her the time I should have. I was thinking of so many things, but I didn't want to mess with her instincts because she seemed to be an intuitive actress. And she would get into a scene remarkably well, so I decided to leave her alone and give her as little instruction as possible. I think it worked. Her performance was wonderful. Harrison had to play a real character with humor, depth, and love for Princess Leia. With him, I could make a simple adjustment here and there, and he was very, very good. Kirsch also has gone on record about the only disagreement he had with George Lucas, saying, There was really one disagreement. It was the carbon freeze scene when Princess Leia says, I love you. Han Solo's response in the script was, I love you too. I shot the line, and it just didn't seem right for the character of Han Solo. So we worked on the scene on the set. We kept trying different things and couldn't get the right line. We were into the lunch break, and I said to Harrison, Try it again and just do whatever comes to mind. That is when Harrison said the line, I know. After the take, I said to my assistant director, David Tomlin, it's a wrap. David looked at me in disbelief and said something like, hold on. 
we just went to overtime. You're not happy with that, are you? And I said, yes, it's the perfect Han Solo remark. And so we went to lunch. George saw the first cut and said, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not the line in the script. I said, I love you, too, was not Han Solo. Han Solo was a rebel. George felt that the audience would laugh. And I said, that's wonderful. He is probably going to his death for all they know. We sat in the room and he thought about it. He then asked me, did you shoot the line in the script? I said, yes. So we agreed that we would do two preview screenings once the film was cut and set to music with the line in and then with the line out. At the first preview in San Francisco, the house broke up after Han Solo said, I know. Then the film was over. People came up and said, that is the most wonderful line and it worked. So George decided not to have the second screening. George was the best producer I ever worked with. He left me alone and only came to England a few times. I told George at one point that I was behind schedule. Not that it was anyone's fault, but because it was so complex. Many of the special effects that were done on the set did not work at all. His answer was, keep doing what you're doing. Just keep shooting. This is the greatest thing for a director to hear from a producer. The great Urban Kirshner passed away at the age of 87 on November 27, 2010 in Los Angeles, California after a long battle with lung cancer. Thank you, Kirsch, for all you did for us, and may the force be with you.